Hey everyone, today we're going to be using Fusion within DaVinci Resolve version 16 to come up with a command prompt style title like you see in the bottom of the screen. So before we get started, it might be handy to take a look at some other tutorials I've done on the spline editor, as well I've done a couple tutorials on titles and how they're developed in DaVinci Resolve. Alright, so let's get to it. So first thing we want to do, I have a fresh timeline set up here. So we're going to want to bring in a text plus node. So let's open up our effects library. Let's go down to titles. And we're going to want to take a text plus here. So we're going to bring that down, put it in our timeline, and we see what we have in title. Now we're going to be using Fusion to do most of our edits, but let's just, for now, stick within the edit page, which is what we're in now, just to get the basic setup as far as we want our look and feel. So we'll open up the inspector. I'm going to switch to single mode here. I'm going to give ourselves a little bit more room. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change our text. So here I'm going to do a greater than sign here for our command prompt. And I'm going to put some text in. So we have assumed control. Now that obviously goes off the edge of the screen. So we're going to take the size. We're going to bring that down a little bit. And we want it to look something like that. That looks okay. Okay, I just moved some things around to give us a little bit more space to work in. So this isn't a very computery font. So what we're going to do is we're going to change to Courier New. So everything here is a, is a default font, of course, that's installed on, on your system as well. Um, all the effects that I'm going to be using to, to generate this title, they're all part of the standard free uh, DaVinci Resolve. Nothing in Studio is, is required. Um, so let's find Courier New. So there we go. I'm just going to reduce the size a little bit more. And we're going to want to change the color here. We're going to want to go with, we'll take this uh, really bright green here. There's quite a lot you can do with Text Plus. And if you look under this text drop down here, all this stuff is pretty self explanatory. So we have size, we have tracking, which is the space between the letters. And if you click on these little dots here, that brings you back to the default values. So we'll, we'll keep that set there for now. Line spacing, we only have a single line, but this would control the spacing between your lines. You have a bunch of anchoring controls here, which we'll take a look at in the Fusion Editor to show you a little bit more how those work. And we have our text direction, so if we want to do vertical text or something like that, so top down, that type of stuff. But we're, we're going to keep this pretty simple for now, and we'll go with that. There's also a couple underlines and strike throughs that you can use as well, but we're not going to be using those for today. The thing that we are going to be using to do our animation is this right on. So what this is, there's a start and there's an end node. And what that really represents is the start is your first character, the end is your end character here. And if you grab this, one of these nodes, and you pull it in, you can kind of get a sense that, yep, this is what we want a keyframe on to be able to do this animation. So let's do the animation first. So to do the keyframing, we're going to head over to Fusion, and we're going to get a little bit more real estate here as well. First thing I'm going to do, just because I don't like this checkerboard background, just temporarily I'm going to put a black background in there. So we're going to put a background node, default color is black, that's good. We're going to bring in a merge node here and we're going to bring this background node is going to be set up to the background of the merge node. So if you look at this, this green arrow here is actually the foreground node and the yellow is the background node. Since we want our text to come out on top, we are going to do this or set this up to our background node and then we're going to use the text to go into the foreground node so these nodes kind of switch around depending on how you move things around but if you notice the green node is now connected down here so we can't see anything of course and that's because we're not connected to our media out so there we go so this is just a little bit easier to work work with so first we want our title to go on the bottom of the screen so we're just going to select title here and we're just going to bring this down to the lower third here now let's get set on keyframing with this right on control here. So our default, we're at 120 frames. That's 24 frames per second times 5 seconds. That's where we get the 124 frames. So let's start off our animation very, 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 very simply with uh, going back to our first frame, our zeroth frame. We're going to say, okay, yep, yeah, let's put a keyframe on that. But we want to turn everything off except for the prompt because that prompt wouldn't be something that's popping in it would be the text afterwards so there we go now we're going to move up to frame let's go to frame 60 or so and there we're going to set right on fully up to one which means all our text is exposed so let's just play that and see how that goes that's only going up to the 50th or sorry the 60th frame so what i'm going to do i'm going to grab this little yellow bar here and i'm going to bring it up to here so it's going to loop 
at the 60 second frame here just so we don't have to watch all this these frames where nothing's really happening so I'm gonna press spacebar and then we can see the text enter in just like that so that's looking okay so far but this is a little bit too linear it's just kind of all coming in at once we want to simulate someone typing this where every keystroke doesn't take the same amount of time we want to put a little bit of life into this here so let's just stop that animation and to change the keyframes for this we want to come up to our spline editor here so we open our spline editor let's move some stuff over a little bit I'm gonna turn this on here so we're looking at our template which is our text node here we have the start and we have the end so the start is this value here which corresponds to this node here and the end is this one here so if you look at this bottom one here we're not really playing with the start control I'm also going to turn off the start so we don't see it because it's really just going to be the end control that we're going to be looking at. So first what we want to do is get the overall speed of this animation. So that, that feels about right. I'm okay with that. So that's about 60 frames. That's about the time that we want this thing to go. If I wanted to stretch it, I could just grab these two nodes here. I could come down to this control here, which is the time stretch, and I could stretch it either way but we're gonna stick with 60 frames. I'm gonna focus on this last word here, control. So let's use our, our time scrubber here within the spline editor to come up to the point right before we start typing control. And right there, I'm gonna create a keyframe. And then of course, this keyframe here is sort of when things are, are, are done. Okay, so let's just play this in a loop here so we can do our edits, we can look at things, how, the, how they're looking live. And the reason that I've done the keyframing first is because once we start to add all these effects on top of the text, it's going to kind of bog, well, at least bogs my computer down a little bit. So things are very uncluttered right now, and it's going to be pretty responsive to any changes we make in the timeline here. Okay, so we've made our keyframe down here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make I'm going to make another keyframe here, and I want to just stretch this out a little bit here. So this this keyframe here to here is the word control essentially. So I'm going to take I'm going to select these three nodes. I'm going to push S to smooth those out a little bit and you can see now the word control kind of comes in comes in quickly so we're just adding a little bit of variety here there's no right or wrong way to do this it's really just preference here um, one thing I could do if we really wanted to um, is I could create another node here and I could actually bring it down so when so when we have an inversion here and this spline turns downwards we're essentially going backwards and we're going to be deleting characters in a sense. So let me just play this to show you what I mean here. So right at the end, you see the O and the L. We kind of delete those and write them again. But that's not necessarily what we want. So I'm just going to move these around. And I'm just kind of creating a random pattern. I'm not putting a whole lot of, lot of thought into this. But let's take a look at how this looks here. There we go. So that's good. So it looks like when control comes up, types most of the word and then there's a little bit of a delay so that's good so let's do the same thing with assumed I'm gonna that starts here I'm gonna create a keyframe here and a keyframe here and I'm gonna grab all those and I'm gonna press s and there we go so let's take a look at that now all right so that's looking all right and we're just gonna smooth out this node here at frame zero okay so this is looking pretty good so I think we're good for our animation maybe assumed is coming up a little bit too quickly here. So let's just stretch that one out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these nodes here. So these nodes here are where control, the word control comes in. So I'm just going to drag those out a little bit over here. And then these here from here to here or so is assumed. So I'm going to grab those and I'm going to stretch those ones out a little bit just to make that a bit longer. Let's see how that looks now. All right, so that looks pretty good now. And again, you can play around with it as much as you want. So now what we notice since we stretched out our time, we're ending out on frame 70. So this little yellow bar isn't, is not is not letting us see the whole um, animation. So I'm gonna pull that back a little bit here. We'll go back to frame 90. Okay, so before we get started on adding a bunch of effects, let's just clean this up a little bit. Um, so our background and our merge, these aren't really gonna be part of the final thing. So, so I'm just gonna move my media out over here. I'm just going to set my merge up over here and bring the background up over top here. And this is going to be our area where we add everything to our text. So let's just rename things a little bit here just to keep things clean. We're going to call this simply text. 
And we'll keep these names here. I'm okay with that right now. So one thing you can do to help organize things is just do a select all, right click, and go line up to grid. And that's just gonna snap everything to, to the grid in the background. So that just helps keep things clean and, and looking nice. So the first thing we wanna do here is add a blur. If you look at the edges of these letters, they look pretty, pretty harsh. We're just gonna add a blur. And the blur will use the default blur that's provided here. So I'm gonna drag it down here and I am still holding the mouse button and you'll notice the colors change on the line below. So when those colors change, that means when I release the button, it's gonna snap in between. If I wanted to remove this, so right now it's kinda of stuck, I can hold down the shift key and pull it out and that keeps this line here intact. But I don't wanna do that, I wanna put this one back. So if I wanna drag something that's already here and not from the toolbar, from the toolbar I can just drag it on and it'll snap into place. Here though, if you notice if I drag it on top of this line, nothing happens, I have to hold the shift key down and then it'll insert itself in. And that's a little off, off the grid, so I can select this one here and I can go line up to grid and everything looks good. I'm just gonna call this blur instead of blur two. Don't wanna go overboard on this here. So this is a pretty simple blur here. It's really just the blur size that we wanna care about. Uh, I'm gonna go with a value of, let's say 2.5, let's say. So just a little bit of blur and we can play with this and change this as we see fit. But for now, I think that looks pretty good. Second thing we wanna add is some scan lines since we're gonna be going for sort of that 80s, 90s look where you'd see a bunch of scan lines on low resolution monitors. Scan lines isn't offered up here. We're gonna have to right click here. We'll go add tool and we're gonna come down to here to resolve uh, effects. There's a whole section on resolve effects. We're gonna come to stylize and there's two scan lines here. I'm just gonna take this, this first scan line here and drag and shift and hold and put that into place there. So right away we have those scan lines. These are a little bit too intense. So what we can do is we can change the line frequency and we're gonna increase that. There we go, that's looking a bit better there. Still that's a little bit overcooked I'd say. So what we wanna do is we wanna come down to this global blend option and we're just gonna pull that back a little bit. So if we go fully to one, that's essentially turning off the scan lines, but we don't wanna go that far. We just wanna have a little bit of an effect there. And I think that's looking pretty good right there. So I'm about 0.63. If we ever wanna see what, but just to turn one of these nodes off, just to see what things look like, I can come up to the toggle here and I can toggle back and forth. Okay, so I'm just gonna stack these up a little bit, get things a little, looking a little bit better. And again, we line up to grid, and there we go. So, after scan lines, what we want to do is we want to put in a little bit of a flicker here. So obviously, something has assumed control, so things are are going wrong. So a little bit, a little bit of a flicker can kind of imply a bit of, a bit of impending doom. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click, we're going to go add tool, we're going to come down to resolve effects transform, and we're going to go flicker addition, and we're going to put this in line here. Uh, I'm going to just double click that to delete and bring that up to the merge, bring this in here. And again, we're just going to do our line up to grid here. I'm going to bring this in here to, so we're, we're at frame 74, it looks like uh, our last keyframe is. So I'm just going to bring this in here to 74. Off we go and we see things flickering a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. So I click on flicker edition here and here's all the stuff that we can modify. I'm pretty happy with the default values. If anything though, it's just a little bit too intense. So again, I'm gonna take this blend and I'm just gonna blend a little bit of that out so it's just a bit more subtle. There, I think that's looking pretty good there. Okay, so now what we wanna add is a very subtle glow around these letters here. And to do that, we can right click here, we can go add tool. I'm gonna to come down to resolve effects light and I'm gonna click on glow. Now what I wanna do here is first just set up our glow. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this text in line here and I'm gonna split the output of this text plus control. And we can do this, this is fine. We can have multiple outputs on a text node. So this one here is gonna to go to glow and I'm gonna put this on viewer one. I'm gonna come up here and enable this so I can see what we see here on viewer one. So now you notice that the blur and the scan lines have not been applied yet over here. So we're back to sort of our default value. There's no background. So that's why we see the checkerboard background again here. Okay, so now we have our glow set up ready to go. So I'm gonna come up to select output. Instead of glowing image, I'm gonna put glow alone. And basically that's gonna show just the glow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge that back with our original text afterwards, but we'll get to that in a minute. So you notice the text here is turned black because the actual letters are turned off. We're just showing the actual glow here. So we're just trying to get this set up right now. So what we wanna do is we wanna take 
this uh, threshold and bring it down here. Now you start to see that very subtle green glow and that's exactly what we're looking for. So we come down to these relative spread values here. So there's red, green, and blue and we're working in just pure green at this moment. So um, this is what this control does here. It's, it's how much we sort of smear this out. So we wanna kind of have something that looks something like that. And you can get some pretty neat effects here with this horizontal and vertical ratio. If we were to play with this, you can get some kind of neat, neat things going on there. But we're just gonna keep this centered for now. And our spread, something like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our brightness control here. So if I take this brightness off, we can get rid of it or we can really crank it up. So we don't want this too much. Again, the more subtle these effects are, I think the more effective they are. So something that looks just something like that. I think that should be good there. So what we're gonna do now is add another merge. I'm just gonna call this one just plain old merge. And what we're gonna do is we are going to merge the glow with the original text value here. So again, the inputs and the outputs, green is the foreground, so we want our text to be the foreground. So we're gonna pull that in there, boom. We want our glow to be the background. So we're gonna put that in there and we're gonna take our merge and we're gonna hook it up to the blur. So the last thing that we wanna do now is we wanna add a mask. And what I wanna do is I just wanna simulate one of those old CRT monitors where the outsides are a little bit dimmer than what you'd see in the middle. So what we're gonna, we're gonna do is put an elliptical mask around this and we're just gonna put a very subtle vignetting effect almost on, on top of this here. So to do that, we'll just go up here, we'll grab our elliptical mask here. We're gonna drag it down beside text and we're gonna put that into text. Right now we're just showing what's inside this circle. So we gotta do a little adjustment on the circle. So I'm gonna center that around our text here. We're going to take the width and we're gonna make this a little bit wider and we can take the height and just bring it down just a little bit there. Now what we wanna do is the soft edges here cause that's gonna sort of blur this mask in and I just wanna play with this soft edge just until we start to see these two ends kind of get a little bit darker. So I'm gonna to go to the extreme just to show you what I mean. If we go fully up, uh, it might be just a little bit too dark. So I'm just gonna pull this back to somewhere around there. And again, it's a very, very, very subtle effect. And again, I can come up to this toggle here and I can click this on and off just to see that, yeah, it's just doing the tiniest little bit of, uh, of darkening around the edges there. Maybe we'll just go for a little bit more here. Okay, so let's take a look at this now. We have assumed control. Perfect, okay, so that's starting to look pretty good. Let's head back into, we're gonna use the cut page and we are gonna go to our media pool. I have some clips in here that I put in previously. One of them is a very simple clip of this, uh, this earth I got from, uh, from uh, Pexels. Put the credits in the description link below. And I'm gonna move this title up top here. We want the, the earth animation on the bottom and then the text coming up on top of that. Now, if you take a look here and we, we, you know, we start off with our nice animation and then the screen goes completely black and that's because we still have our background set up. So I'm gonna go back into Fusion. I'm gonna take this background, take these two nodes. I'm just gonna shift dra or drag those out, hook up to our, our uh, media out, go back into the cut page and now we see that our text is overlaid as we would expect. So let's take a look at this here. We're spinning, we have assume control. And there we go. And we can put a quick transition of a cross dissolve maybe at the end of this here, just so it fades out. Oh, there we go. So I'm just gonna push P, we'll go into full screen mode here and bring the slider back. Just have one final look at things. It's looking pretty good. So that's it for today, everybody. Thanks so much for joining, and we will talk to you soon. Bye for now.